Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whatever time of day it is. This time, we are reading The Night of the Lanterns by Nicholas. He often daydreamed about life and not feeling worthy of such dreams coming true. He wasn't a hopeless romantic, but he had always wondered what it would be like to spend the day with his guardian angel in real life. She would visit him while he dreamed, watching over him, but all the while separated by the veil, a veil so thin that the dream seemed real, but for him she was always like a warm, soft, subtle glow, a comforting light, and at times he would wake and could only remember lingering thoughts as they faded away. He began to doubt that they could ever come true anyway and lost trust in the universe of things. Plagued with many setbacks in life and the feeling of his dreams slipping away, he soon forgot what happiness was and joy and the memory of his guardian angel long forgotten. Now it seems as if happiness was a curse and yes, he was depressed and self-victimized badly, and very sad on the inside, and not able to express himself outwardly. So he learned, as they say, fake it till you make it. He had seen the evils of the world, and lost all reason, and accepted that he didn't deserve any better. His guardian angel had been trying to reach him all this time, but not getting through to him. It seemed to be a misalignment of time, as if he was too tired to dream and constantly given to others so gladly to take from him that he neglected to take care of himself. It was like the connection to his angel had been cut off, but she knew she had to do something. First, she sent signs in a soft, subtle way then a little more direct, and even synchronizing them more directly. But he was still trapped in his mental prison, self-imposed punishment for his own doings. This went on for many years, beating on himself, until he finally submitted. He would wake up and then fall back asleep, and even not aware of the signs because he did not believe he was worthy. She knew she had to bend the rules and send a strong signal this time, one that could not be mistaken. She had to get him to smile, a genuine smile because she knew it was contagious. Maybe then he would remember. And as it turns out, that's also the reason for this writing, just to show my gratitude, as now I know you are smiling too as I light up your face. I remembered the authentic me. I remembered how to smile. At first it hurt because my lips got chapped and then the corners cracked. And all of this based on a rumor. I heard that you liked the way I smiled and it brightened your day, which in turn brightened mine like a happy bubble of joy and bliss. He remembered as he drifted off to sleep. He remembered her warm, glow and tingles dancing in his head. He remembered those nights in Paris and many others around the world. He remembered a time before time and a time before he was born. Okay, stop the tape. Let's break the fourth wall here and step back into the author's point of view. I find it highly appropriate at this time to use a little wordplay and say this is how Nicholas got his spark back. Not only did he dream again, but he awakened with such acceleration that even his angel was taken back. He remembered falling as an angel and being bound in a cage. He remembered learning to live without wings and working to become an earth angel. He lived a thousand lifetimes all over in a single moment. And he had an abrupt awakening that sat him right up in the bed and he looked at the clock. 3.33 on the dot and this happened for many nights until the message became clear. 
His angel was trying to get in touch with him. She needed to remind him a few things to help him along his path to becoming a winged seer. First, she had to remind him to stop playing the white rabbit. But why? And what does this have to do with this story you might be thinking? Well, it's symbolic, of course. The white rabbit is always out of time, and he's in a hurry running around, trying not to be late, but always arriving on time. This reminded him that he needed to go back to the future and retrieve the future emotion of the wish fulfilled and bring it back to the present. That night, the veil was lifted and emotional eyes were given, making him a winged seer as he gained higher perspective. As above, so below, a new understanding of life in many ways. His DNA was unlocked and new gifts given, and his gratitude grew even for those that had wished him harm, for without them he could not have achieved these lessons. For that he began to pray the most simplest prayers for others, that their wish be granted as his was. This is one of the most powerful prayers that one can give to another, he remembered. Because what he wished for them came back to him in the form of appreciation. To grant others wishes to be fulfilled was the Garden of Eden. And now, with new understanding, he began to transform. And this was written in his soul with a promise. One written by the hand of the Creator the only one that he could choose to break, but he won't because it's the very thing that made him chosen. And now he writes with a pen. The promise to be open and honest stays with him to this day, no matter how much the truth hurts. He needed to understand universal knowledge and how to speak it, how to translate it, and how to understand the words of our souls beneath the voices. He faced his darkest fears and brung them to light from the shadows. To see the lessons and turn the test into testimony, no longer trying to motivate, but instead elevated to inspire. Much in the way his guardian angel had awakened him, now he sees the path and how his gifts fit in and how so fitting that much of it revolves around a pen and a pad written. So many letters in my life sent, waiting on a response that was never going to come, because I was seen as weird or needy, for wanting to express my love in writing. I guess they all become characters of my stories now, and how it made me feel to admire people that couldn't see me like I was a ghost. At least if one person reads or hears my writing, then it's worth expressing, and picking up the pen as the author and writing again. But this time I have my guardian angel, and she made me realize that my gifts were still meant to be shared, but there are still some that are worth saving. And this gift is one that I enjoy giving, and it is sacred, and I am saving it for the night of the lanterns. This message has been inspired by the Soul Center Dream Series. And I am the author, Nicholas.